OK, and uh, welcome to this week's lab. So this week, we are going to visualize the COVID-19 data in Tableau again. Um, but here we will learn to create some special charts in Tableau. Uh, and also, I want to introduce Tableau Public, so which is a free website where you can share your visualizations uh, with others Okay, that you created from Tableau and you can publish to Tableau Public. Um, so first, if you don't have an account, you need to create a Tableau public account. Remember that account is free and also it's different from your Tableau online account. OK, and for the data, we are still using the 1.3 acre data. So please make sure that you downloaded the latest cases data from the 1.3 acres through the URL provided on Canvas, or you can apply for your own APIs from 1.3 acre. And we also want to combine that data with the census publish and also income data. So let's open the uh, this flow files in Tableau Prep Builder. So let's rerun this flow so that we can use the updated cases with the income. So we can join those uh, data to create a new hyper file. OK, so now you can see that the cases now is using the new uh, CSV file. And I'm still using the old uh, publish income. And for the output, so just to make sure that we know that which data we are working with. So let's go to our OneDrive. And here, let's create a new folder. Uh, lab 10. So let's save the hyper file into our lab 10 folder. OK, um, and now let's run it. So here we just exported uh, the updated case with the publish and the income into a new hyper file. All right, so now let's close this flow and you can choose save or what not to save. And now let's go to our lab 10. So let's open hyper so that will bring the updated a hyper file that in the Tableau desktop. OK, and so in this data set, we should see the, the latest date in this week. OK, uh, so also let's uh, add some filters. So here, so uh, we are no longer going to fill out by date. But if you want, you can feel free to do that. Uh, but here I will fill out based on state because for this lab, um, I want to focus on a single state. So you can choose the state that you want. Uh, so here I'm going to choose Virginia. But please feel free to choose a different state that uh, you're interested. OK, so this is the data source filter. So now we are looking at the data that in Virginia. All right, uh, next, uh, let's do something that's similar as we did in the previous lab. So let's calculate the death rate and also case rate. So death rate is the number of deaths divided by the number of cases. So that is death rate. And also remember, we need to use aggregation. Otherwise, we will have errors. So we want to use a total of the deaths divided by some total of the cases. So that means when we calculate the ratios, so no, no matter at which level, county level or state level or the records level, we want to get a total first and it divided by the total of the, so total deaths divided by the total of the case. All right, and let's change the format so that uh, this one we are using a percentage. Again, let's also calculate the total population. So remember that we do have population for each single record, but those are the population at the county level, okay, or the FIPS level. Uh, so here, this is where we need to use the level of the expression. So that's we want the population to be fixed, okay. So square bracket fixed at the FIPS level. Uh, so here we want the average of the population. OK, so with this we call it fixed population. So that will make sure that we are using the right population to calculate 
the case rate. Okay, so now let's calculate the case rate, which is the sum of the cases. Okay, divided by the sum of the fixed population. Okay, so use the right of the level of the details so that we will make sure that we are calculating the right data. Um, let's change the number format uh, to percentage as well. All right, so now we have the data ready. So first, let's create a map that is showing the case rate. Okay, and let's change the color to um, diverging. Okay, so here we have the case rate, and we can also replace that one with the death rate. Oop, uh, we need also change the color again. Okay, so but here we want create a map that the user can control uh, to show the case rate or death rate. Okay, so we want to use a one single map to show the both informations, but the user can make the decision either case rate or the death rate. So here, let's create a new parameter. Let's call it choose the rate. And the data type will be string, and that will from a list. Okay, and this will, let's First one we call it case rate. The second one we call it death rate. Okay, <clears throat> so now we have two values, and uh, let's make this one to uh, upper cases. Okay. Okay, so case rate and also death rate. So we have those two values. Okay, and now let's create a new calculate field. Let's call it selected rate. Okay, so here let's use cases uh, function. And we drag the chooser rate. Okay, we see when it is case rate okay so this should match exactly what we define in the parameters we will retain the case rate and when it is a death rate and we will retain the death rate let's see and all right so here we are using the case function. Of course, you can also use the if else uh, function. When we selected case rate, it will return the case rate. And when we will return the death rate, uh, it will return the death rate. OK, uh, looks like we have an errors. OK, oh, I missed the then. So then it will be case rate. And when the death rate is selected, I need the death rate. OK. So now we have this one ready. So now let's drag the selected read into colors. And let's choose a color. Um, OK, so now you can see it is the selected read. Uh, let's also change the format. Uh, let's choose that one to be percentage. OK. And let's allow the user to control the parameter. So let's say choose a read. OK, and let's choose that one to a single value. OK, so let's say case read. So now we are showing the case read. And death read. So now we are showing the death read. OK, and let's add it to the title. So in the title, we can see we are showing the parameters OK, in Virginia. OK, so now we are looking at the death rate. And now we are looking at the case rate. OK, so that is a controlled parameter uh, for the chart. And you may notice that there is one county, actually two counties that do not have data. So that is because, remember, 
in the last lab. So there are two counties that we cannot find out the matched FIPS with uh, the sensor data. So that's why we have two counties that do not have information in Virginia. All right, uh, so that's our first sheet. Uh, so let's also name this one reads in VE. Okay, so let's move on. So our second chart, we want to create a Bullinger band chart. So band chart. So that means that we want to show the number of cases over time. We also want to show the, uh, that upper band and also lower band that within specific range, the number of standard deviation so that we won't say that are there any abnormal range of those increased cases or the um, number of cases over time. So first let's define two parameters. One control the time interval. Okay so let's call it uh, time interval and let's choose that one as integer and also let's choose that one as the range. Okay, let's say from one to 10. Okay, uh, with a step size of one, I think that should work. And next, let's calculate the moving average, okay, of the sum of cases. So calculate the field. Uh, let's call it moving average, which is a Windows function. So, um, Windows average. Within that, uh, let's say we want to calculate the sum of the cases. Okay. Uh, in the past time intervals. Okay. And for the end, let's choose uh, zero. All right. So now let's bring moving average and also the total of cases. Uh, into our chart. So let's see how does that look like. Uh, so now let's choose that one to be uh, months. Okay. And you can see the moving average per month. Okay. Uh, let's make that one as a dual axis map. Okay. So we can see the number of cases. And also here we have the moving average in that month. Of course, we can go to weeks, okay, and we can also go to days, okay, and for the time intervals, so let's show this parameter. So let's say the time interval is one day. Now we choose moving average of two days. Uh, let's also synchronize uh, the axis, okay. So that's a moving average at the day level, and also we can also look at the week level. OK, in the past uh, time intervals. So now we know what is a moving average. So actually, I also want to show the band that is upper band and also lower band. So that is difference uh, that about one or half standard deviation or less uh, one or half standard deviation. So those upper and also lower band. So first, let's also create a new parameter. So this one we call it number of the standard deviation and let's use float and let's give it a list so first let's give it one standard deviation 0.5 standard deviation and 0.25 standard deviation okay so let's give it three values and now let's calculate the upper band on which is the moving average plus the number of the standard deviation times Windows standard deviation. So that Windows standard deviation calculate the sum of the cases. Okay, so that is upper band. And let's also make a copy and uh, calculate the lower band. Uh, so the lower band is the moving average minus the standard deviation times the wind, uh, window standard deviation. Okay, so let's bring those two into the chart. So try to access. Uh, 
Okay, and again, let's uh, synchronize those axes. Okay, so we can see that here in the middle that is moving average, in the upper that is upper band, and in the lower that is the lower band. Uh, let's also use allow user to change the parameter. Okay, so let's give it uh, a list. Okay, so you can say 0 0.5, 0 0.25. If we choose a smaller standard deviation, more and more uh, sample data are outside of this um, a range. Okay, and let's say that we also want to give colors that, so if those uh, values are outside of this range, so for the sum of the cases. So let's create new calculated field. Let's call it out of um, range. And so that means if the moving average, uh, so if the sum of the cases is great, sum of the cases is great, then the upper all the sum of the cases is less than the lower lower band so that is what we define at out of range and let's bring that one for the sum of cases let's bring that one to colors okay and let's change the color so let's say if that's true uh, we use if that is false, we use uh, blue, and now if, if that's true, um, we use orange. Okay, that looks like great. Okay, um, now let's also, uh, so uh, if we change different intervals, okay, if we choose different standard deviations, we can see the range will change. So let's simplify this uh, chart a little bit. So let's say we, we drag the moving average out. So we just use upper band and also lower band. Okay, and let's also change the colors. Okay, uh, for the uh, for those upper band and also lower band. So upper and the lower. Let's give it gray color. Okay, um, and also let's change the size. Okay. All right. Uh, so now you can see it, we have a very clear patterns. Okay, so if that is out of the range, we will see that one. And if that is within the range, it will be blue. Uh, all right. Uh, I think we don't need this card. Okay, so we can just let user to change, uh, define the time intervals and also define the range of the standard deviations. Okay, remember that the last week we don't have the entire data set, so that's why that for the last week we see that auto range. Okay, so just remember that we don't have the complete data for the for the last week. Okay, some of the cases. Okay, and uh, let's also make sure this one as entire view so that will fit with our uh, dashboard later. Okay, so now let's go ahead to create another chart. That is that is a, a bumper chart. Okay, so we want to use this bumper chart to show the ranks of the counties by the death rate. Uh, so if you look at the death rate, uh, it is defined by the sum of the cases, uh, sum of the deaths divided by the sum of the cases. And actually, we should change this one a little bit. We should bring that into this ZN function because um, for some counties, so they may have zero cases on some days. So in that case, uh, we will have non values, and ZN will convert that non values into zeros. All right, so let's bring the, the death rate into rows and let's bring the date into columns and let's copy that one again. So let's look at the date into months. So here we have the date uh, in two years and also within each year we have date in different months. Um, next, let's bring the counties uh, into the labels. Okay, and we have 
very weird sample point that is for this county. Uh, if you look at the four data, so that's that's a very rare scenario that on that in that month there are only one case, case, but there are two deaths. So because you know there's a delay that between case and death, so that's why we have a death rate of two hundred percent. Okay, um, we can of course use some like if else statement to modify that if you think that is necessary. So in this case, I I will just leave it as the default one. Um, and next, let's use the rank so that we won't see the rank of the counties that we won't see the county have highest death rate and also county have the lowest death rate. So I choose the rank uh, quick table calculation and I also use calculating use counties. OK, so now we have all the counties that on this chart. Uh, let's also bring the death rate into the tool tip. We can see that the number one has the highest death rate and also uh, the others have the lower death rate. So let's change the axis. So let's say reverse the axis. OK, and we can see uh, in December, OK, the top counties and also the county that had the lowest death rate. OK, and you, you may realize that, OK, so this is not a great visualization because it shows too many um, uh, samples uh, that overlapped. So let's let's create a set that we just want to see the top five counties that has the highest death rate. So let's right click county and create a set. Remember, set is something like the, the filters. Go to top. Let's say we want the top five based on the death rate. OK, and bring the set to the filters. Let's also give the counties different colors. And for the color skimmers, let's choose the color blind. OK, uh, so now you can see that um, uh, for those counties, their rank changed. OK, so in February, we have those five counties. Um, because again, in, in January, we have those five counties, but in February, the data is not complete yet, so that we have other counties, the top five death counties that um, all ranked as number one because all the death rates are zero. OK, and also let's see that for the labels, let's say we want just for the end. OK, so we just want to label the end of the lines. And we can choose that one to a little bit smaller. OK, and uh, for the men's months, let's also change the format. OK, so let's use abbreviations. OK, so that is the rank of the death rate. So let's um, call it rank of the death rate. And also give it an entire view. OK, so that is uh, uh, the bumper chart. OK, so far as well, we can see the base county. Uh, rank to number five, okay, and next go to the number one in November, and also ranked as uh, number three uh, in December, rank number one in uh, January, okay. Okay, and our last chart is the waterfall chart. So this is chart okay so what for chart is a is a type of chart that we can show the change of a total dimensions over time so here we want to see the change of a total death per month again let's drag date uh, twice to the columns so let's go to the months and here let's drag deaths into the rows okay uh, so we are going to use the quick calculation. So we want to use the running total. And uh, we can see the total of deaths has been increased. 
And let's choose a marker to be Gantt, Gantt bars. So here we have little tiny bars. Okay. Uh, for the size, we want uh, to see uh, that the depth has been changed over time. Okay. Uh, sorry for the colors. So let's say we drag depth into colors. Um, here, let's use a, a, a quick cal calculation. We want to see the difference. Okay, and let's reverse the color schema so that if there's an increase, we use orange. If there's a decrease, we use blue. Okay, and we can see that in January, we have a decrease. Again, that is because we don't have a complete data set. Uh, we can see in April, May, we have increase, and in June, we have decrease. Okay, uh, we also want to see the size of the dance in each month. So let's also bring the dance to the size. Okay, and uh, we can see in January and also December, we have a lot of deaths. Okay, and also we have a lot of increase that comparing to the previous months. All right, so that is our waterfall chart, and let's put that into entire view. Uh, let's call it number of deaths. Okay. And to make it consistent, let's also change the format of the months to use abbreviations. Okay. Uh, so now we have those uh, four uh, sheets ready so uh, we have the map shows the number of the reads in each county uh, we have this number of the let's just call it number of cases okay number of cases that over time where user can control their st standard deviations uh, we have the bumper chart to show the ranks okay and we also have this waterfall chart to show the number of deaths. So now let's combine everything into a dashboard. So let's make this one to be automatic. Let's bring the map uh, number of cases. OK, so both uh, map have the control. So let's bring the legend and also the controls on the right side. All right, uh, let's also bring the other two chart. OK. So one is waterfall and also one is uh, the rank. So um, I think I'm going to keep that one as float. OK, and also this one, I also keep that one as fl uh, float. Okay, so I can delete this container. Okay, and we can also add some uh, introductions. For example, let's add a blank here. Uh, so we can add some text. So author. Okay, and also you can add the other uh, informations that you like. Um, let's separate those two parts. Okay, 
Um, so now uh, I think we are happy with our visualizations. So one important um, aspect is that we want to enable the interactivities. So let's enable this one as a filter. Okay, so now if we select, you see a uh, different um, counties, we can see the number of cases and also number of deaths will be updated. Okay. And however, the uh, the rank of the deaths has some issues. Okay, so that is because uh, for the rank we set a set. Okay, so let's uh, we want always provide the top five county with the highest death rate. So let's add an action. Okay, and see so change the set values. Okay, so for the source. Um, that is the rate in VA. Okay, and we want to change the set. Okay, we want to assign all the value to the current set. Okay, and when we clean the uh, selections, we want to add all value to the set. Okay, so let's see how that works. So now, if I select those counties, I can see that in those areas, okay, so which count the it will only will show the top five counties in those areas. Okay, and if I select those counties, I will see the number of cases and also number of deaths. Okay, uh, and also the top five counties that had higher death rate in those areas. Okay. All right, and let's give it a title again. <laughs> I'm going to give it COVID-19 data in VA, and this is also not the best title, so. Okay, and you can please feel free to add the other uh, information or the element uh, to this uh, dashboard. And finally, let's hide the other dashboard, uh, the sheet that's been used, so that we want the audience to be focused on the the dashboard that we created. Okay, and also we may want to check that one in a different layout view, especially in the cell phone views. Okay, and see if there are any issues. Uh, if we see some issues, so we may want to uh, change that one. So here, I think uh, I did find some issues. So for example, this should should next to the number of cases. So I want to put that one above the number of cases and also time interval. Okay, and this one is also belong to the map. So I will uh, put that one. Okay, so that user can choose which one they want to see. And for the author information, etc. So probably this one should be to the bottom. Okay, so let me drag that one to the bottom. Okay, let's drag this one above that. Okay, uh, you can see that by default, Tableau uh, removed those blanks that we added earlier. Okay, and let's also check legend that is next to each other. Okay, so now it looks nice. Um, okay, next we are going to uh, publish this one to Tableau Public. So let's go to server. First, let me sign out of my uh, previous uh, session. So let's sign in. Uh, so here, we, if you want to select uh, connect to Tableau Public, so make sure we choose Tableau Public and we hit connect and here you have tell your tableau public account not your tableau online account okay and now let's sign in okay so now we sign in and now go to server so here we can see we want save to tableau public so let's see save to tableau public uh, you can give the title, so let's just call it COVID-19 in VA. 
OK, so uh, Tableau Public is a free platform that you can view the visualizations that you created from Tableau Desktop. OK, uh, so here this is how it looks like on the Tableau Public. Uh, you can see that number of views zero, zero people favorite this one, and this has been published. OK. Uh, if you want to edit the details, so you can do that. So, for example, the title, descriptions, and, and also there's also a nice feature that uh, do you want to provide which table of public visualization inspired you? Okay. Um, and also, do you want also to download your data? Okay, so if you don't, don't want to download, and you can uncheck this one. Okay, and let's save it. Okay, uh, so you can publish dashboard, single sheet, or story to Tableau Public. Uh, but the difference is that on Tableau Public, anyone can view your data. Okay, so here let's try it on Tableau Public. So you can see, switch to the desk read. Okay. And if I select different counties, okay, and you can see they changed. Okay, so this might give you some idea that you I may need to, uh, to adjust the size of those legend a little bit later in Tableau Desktop, and also if I change the time intervals. Okay, so that is also working. Great.